Let's talk about motion. Motion can have both speed and direction. We're going to talk about what that means with forces. First, let's talk about kinetic energy. There are two types, kinetic and potential. Kinetic energy is the energy in motion. For example, so you're sitting on a swing. A ball is falling. So swinging back and forth, that was one example. As the ball is falling, not when you're holding it, not when it's on the ground, when it's falling. Potential energy is your stored energy. It's the energy while you're holding the ball or when it actually is on the ground, not when it's moving, but when you actually are holding it and it has that potential to fall. The higher up, the more gravitational potential energy you have, so the more impact you would have in that fall. Even a hot dog just sitting there, it has stored energy. It has stored chemical energy that you could burn in your stomach during digestion. Roller coasters. There are all kinds of energies transformations going back from potential to kinetic. When you're at the top, that is your most potential energy you can possibly have. Then you work your way down. On the way down, it's kinetic. But down here in the bottom, that's when you move back to potential. Moving your way up again, totally potential. Now kinetic potential. It goes back and forth. So let's do it again. We're at 100% potential. Kinetic potential. Kinetic and potential. Kinetic. So when you're at the top of these hills, that's where you have your most potential energy. The moving down is where you have your kinetic. Then we drop down here into potential. Sorry, fully kinetic here as we go through. Kinetic, kinetic, kinetic. And then as we go back up, we're back to potential. So let's label that as potential here. Kinetic in the middle. Down here, we're transitioning then from kinetic to back to potential as we get to the top. And then we're going down again is kinetic. What slows us down? Friction. Friction is going to work against those motions. Your friction can be air friction. It could be ground friction. It is a force working in the opposite direction of where we are going. It's what when you're hitting that top of that roller coaster, that change from kinetic that goes back to potential because you get that moment of stored energy. So as the skater is going forward on ice, she doesn't have a lot of friction because ice doesn't have a lot of friction. But instead, if you were just on the ground dragging your feet, you would have a lot more friction than somebody who was on something like ice, which has a lot less friction. Then you've got gravity. Gravity is the thing that pulls stuff down to the earth, like this basketball. The gravity is holding us on the earth, the basketball on the earth, and gravity affects things everywhere at all times, even the earth itself, the sun. So here's our energy types. You've got mechanical. Mechanical is your muscles moving, machines moving, your mechanical pencil when you click it. These are all mechanical moving, wind-up toys. Another energy is thermal. Rub your hands together. You can feel the thermal energy as you rub your hands together. Fire also has thermal energy. Your foam battery as that Electric energy gets into your phone. Have you ever felt it warm up? That's thermal energy. Any of those heat energies we call thermal. Light. Light can also be called radiant energy. Radiant energy comes from the sun. It comes from light bulbs. It comes from the camera on your the little uh, phone light. All those are considered to be radiant or light. Sound. You're hearing it right now. You hear it in band class. You hear it in choir. Your sound energy, you can hear because the little bones in your ear move as that energy travels through the air and hits your ear. Electrical. Again, you're using it right now with this computer. You're plugged into electricity from some power plant that's generating that energy to bring you electricity through good conductors and good copper ductile wires that have been pulled into long conductive electricity conduits. Those are going to bring you that with their nice, remember that word, ductile, quack, 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 those wires in there. You got solar. Again, I was talking to you about radiant energy from light. Solar energy and radiant energy have a lot in common. The solar is more specific to the sun, though I have heard light energy be called the sun as well. So, And you could have thermal energy from the sun too. Have you ever felt the heat of the sun? Now, solar panels can get you electricity because that energy can be stored. 
So a lot of these energies can go from type to type. They transform. Now chemical, we already talked about a lot of things with chemical this last unit. Did you know that chemicals are inside batteries, such as lithium, that will help to charge the battery and give you energy? We just talked about that hot dog. The hot dog is food that will charge the energy that is in your human body. In animals, we all got to eat through that chemical process to get those, those, those energy juices flowing through us. The battery in your cell phone, the battery in just about anything. All right, so let's move on to how this affects the all laws of Newton. motion. Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, he's the guy with the gravity and the apple thing. Well, he had these laws of motion. The first law of motion is the law of inertia. An object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside of force. Meaning, if you have a book on a table or a ball on the floor, it's not going anywhere until you move it. It wants to sit still until you push it. If you push it, then it's ready to move, and it wants to stay in motion unless acted upon like something by friction. Friction will slow down those objects in motion. Otherwise, they would just keep right on rolling. We've seen that with that ice skater. The second law. Newton's second law says that a greater mass, the greater the mass, the greater the force needed for the same acceleration. So if you are in a car, and it's a small car, and you try to stop, it's easier to stop the smaller car than it would be for a bigger car because the mass. Now, if you have the opposite and you're trying to get going, the smaller car can accelerate a lot faster when the bigger car, a big Mack truck, is going to take a lot longer to accelerate. So when you look at a mouse and a person, one of these has a lot more mass. Look at all these different options here. Which one's going to have a harder time getting going? Probably going to be that elephant. Our third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So let's say that I were to blow up into a balloon. And if I have a bunch of air blown in this balloon, and I go to let the air balloon, uh, if I go to let the balloon go, well, the balloon is going to go forward because it's going to be pushing air outside of it. So it will go forward the exact amount of reaction to the amount of air that's coming out of it. So if there was more air in it, it would go farther. So it's equal and opposite reaction. This is the same thing that makes rockets go into space. That's our force in motion.